post to the tweeter. <clears throat> Ow! Looks like I just pulled a hair out of my arm. <laughs> That's funny. Nerd. My little Dude. girl's in the background playing uh, Sims 4. So that's lovely. She she gets to play well. Two, doing that. two three. You damn this savage. News. How much money have you got? Game history. And Wally will be reviewing Fortnite. Parentheses. Yes, we know that isn't. I mean, it technically is four years old and but then again you review video games that came out last week if you think they look interesting yeah well but at least they have a retro game vibe rampage <laughs> damn you are you are lagging me bad for me yeah all right screw it let's Let's do the Zoom thing. Let's go Zoom. Let's go Zoom. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hang up the call. I'm gonna um, I'll open yep. the. All right. And I'm gonna quit Discord. All right. I'm gonna start the meeting. Fan meeting. Fan meeting. All right. Let's. I uh, gotta open up a Zoom window here. All right. Let me give me a second. Uh. Let's see. Video, uh, media source, browser source, window capture. There we go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Ooh, I'm so big on the screen. Look at me. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I gotta put that behind here. Where are you at, Zoom? There we go. Put me behind there. I don't know where Wally's going to be. So I'm just going to sit there. <sighs> don't you love technology? So cool. All right, I'm going to paste this to Facebook so people know we're on. And Derek is not going to be here tonight because he is uh, it's the middle of baseball season. So... You know how that goes. Hey, kitty, kitty. All right, where, well, where, how do you make a post? There, there it is. Man, Facebook desktop is weird. Oh, come on, you didn't save, what the hell? There we go. Alright, there he is. Admit. No, I don't want to post there. There he is. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. And you look better, too. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, Alright. What? Oh, mic check. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, Rampage. I'm going to get to them soon. What? what, what? You're going to get to what? Uh, because I have PS Now. Uh, I can review PS2 games. Oh, Jesus. I've At got to pull up... Uh, Atlas is what? sending me an, an actual PS2. Because he's get, said he's got like a hundred of them. So I was like, Okay. Why do you have a hundred PS2s? I don't know. He likes PS2s, I guess. There you are. If anybody has a <clears> PlayStation <throat> Three that'll play, that's that has the backwards compatibility. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've never used Zoom for uh, Ner Nerd Cave Retro before. Me and Pat. Uh, oh. Zoom, 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 uh, zoom. Apparently, zoom. Edge is unstable today. Really. Why? So I am opening up Google Chrome. I don't know. After 
after this update, last update, it's been really shitty. Huh. Oh, and I have another update available. Fantastic. Which <laughs> do not surprised? update now. Oh God, no, no. <laughs> No, Close. you piece of shit. Close no. out tweet deck. All right, we're looking good on Twitch. <laughs> Rampage, I'm pretty sure if you send it to Atlas, he can fix it for you. <gasps> Excuse me. I had Chinese food. <laughs> I had leftover pizza. Mm -hmm. From uh, lunch. I had pizza for lunch. And then I ate it for dinner. God, it, it was is so uh, freaking hot in here. It's it, yeah, it's been oppressive today because I went and did my laundry, and I was just soaked. I know. in my sweat. It was the problem is is this time of the day, I've got like blackout curtains and and like two blankets up over the window up here on the second floor, but the sun is like right out there, <laughs> so like all the heat is just like right here. You know what I've decided to do. I'm I'm just gonna read the document off of the damn off of my phone. Okay. I mean, cause fuck it. <laughs> cause my phone works. Yeah, I mean, me might as well. I might get myself a damn Chromebook for this. Sh <laughs> just go All get right. a go get an old uh, tablet from somewhere. Sure you can get a I have a tablet. It's somewhere around here. Well, I just have no idea where it is. You know where my tablet is? You're the one who put it somewhere. I know, I know. That's what I tell you whenever you do something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you hear this? How she gets to do it to me. Uh huh. The tables anyway, have turned, Dad. It has. The tables have turned. Boy, how the ta turntables. <laughs> uh, uh, have you seen The Office? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've seen The Office. I've seen it like 12 times all the way through. Look, some people just don't know. So it's like, yeah. Boy, how the turntables. Oh my, how the turntables. You need to... You need to uh, start watching girlfriend reviews. Girlfriend reviews? They're hilarious. They're hilarious. It's about the whole thing is it's supposed to be about these aren't reviews of video games. These are reviews of what it's like to be someone who lives with somebody who plays these <laughs> video games. And All right. It's so stinking funny. The the re start with Resident Evil Two. I think you'll love it. Okay. <laughs> it's like she talks about how he he looks like. Uh, Aaron Carter. <laughs> <laughs> and she calls him Aaron Carter during the whole thing. Too, That's it, awesome. it's, uh, it's so great. And, and she does clips of TV shows and movies, and that's why I was thinking about it, because <laughs> she does a lot of office stuff. Okay, I'm ready. Right, you ready? All right. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'll, uh, we'll start off as usual. I'll do the first news, and then we'll flip-flop. Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm, I'm as ready as you are. It's so weird starting the show with just the music now and no ad read. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, I two. I should buy advertising from you. <laughs> yeah, no no kidding. Go get a Patreon for us. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. programs and we are back for another episode of the nerd cave retro show my name is jason robbins my name is wally phelps the official fact checker in for Derek diamond who is out on assignment this week uh with the blue wahoos so he couldn't be here tonight so we have mr wally phelps here i love it when you're here on the show <laughs> i was gonna you know what we should have actually said like he's on assignment 
uh, covering E3, which yeah. is all online this year, so he was sucked into a computer, and we haven't seen him since. <laughs> no, he's, he's in the closet over there with a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We slide cookies under the door. He'll be, he'll be fine. That's right. I mean, and we've, <laughs> we've sold him overpriced cheese fries. <laughs> uh, and, so, wh- how have you been this week? It's been hot. Really? It's yeah, been hot. It's, it's stinking hot. Uh, I've been doing very well uh, because I'm on my staycation with my little girl. Yeah, I was going to ask um, how that's going. When did that start? Uh, last week, I decided that I was going to do a two-week nice. staycation with her. And uh, we went to a couple movies, uh, but we've mostly been playing video games. Uh, she she plays a lot of The Sims 4, hmm. uh, Bug Snacks, and... Uh, <laughs> It's and other uh, various video games, and I've been, of course, playing Fortnite. And uh, we watched Cruella, which was much better than it had any right to be. And we (laughs) and uh, and we went to see In the Heights, which was okay. Did you misspell that on purpose online or which one? The Heights. Oh my phone automatically misspelled it because I must misspell it, it a lot. It said the Higgets. Yeah, the Higgets. <laughs> and the Higgets. Yes. I didn't do it on purpose. I just misspell it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. I never heard of it. Uh, it it's the, uh, In the Heights is the new, uh, well, honestly, it's the first musical that Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote yeah. for Broadway. Um, the whole idea is that he was writing it because he didn't oh, that's see... that's what that is. I've been, I heard about that today from somebody. Right. Okay. It, yeah, he didn't see Latino rep- uh, representation on Broadway, so ah, okay. he didn't have any chance to be in anything, so yeah. he wrote In the Heights, and you can tell this is his first musical because... Yeah. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> after watching Hamilton, which is a masterpiece... Yeah, I still this haven't is seen like, it. like... Mm. See, Hamilton's a masterpiece. I know. I, mean, I keep wanting to watch it. I just, I, I, it's one of those things. I feel like it's an investment, and I have to right. actually sit down and forsake all other things to enjoy it. But I, right, I, don't know. And I even, I even listened to it with headphones on and everything. You know, because you know, Ooh, Rampage says a, Hamilton was boring. It, it, it really wasn't. Uh, <laughs> the fight, only way, is, fight, fight. But then again, but then again, I, I'm very interested in. Uh, American history, and I also uh, just how do I put this? Like the second half of it is a lot more dramatic than the first half of it. So it's like you know we're setting up who these people are, and then at the end of it, they all kind of screw everything up, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's fantastic. Uh, so I I really enjoyed it, and the, but in the heights. You know, I do have that kind of that the same criticism that it is kind of boring, and mm. there are long stretches where nothing happens. Yeah. And it, I mean, the musical numbers are hit or miss. The opening number is great. The one about the uh, winning the lottery is great. Uh, I, the uh, the abuela song is really great, but it's like. The, there's like four or five really good songs, but there's like 16 songs on the Ooh. soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> no, yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's worth it's worth a look at, but it's not something I'll watch again. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I've watched this week, we I, I finished Superstore. Uh, I got through the last season. Uh, just the other day, watched the last episode. Uh, nice. As far as movies, I don't think I've watched any movies lately. I've uh, been wanting to go to go to the movies, but I haven't. Right. I, I've been so busy, I haven't been had time to go. Uh, I'm telling have, you, Cruella is surprise, shockingly yeah, good. I've heard that, but I started watching it, but I don't know. I I kind of got distracted, and and we never finished it. Right. Um, well, that you, that's why you need a movie theater. So you I know. Yeah. Can't that's be. yeah. Exactly. That's why the movie theater experience will never go away. Because right. you don't get distracted when you're in a movie theater. Like, if you're watching a movie at home, like, you know, my phone will ring or somebody will text me, and then I got to go 
you know, have a text conversation or, or like just something will catch my attention or, right. you know, I got to go to the bathroom or I'm going to go get a snack or, you know, a thousand things yeah. that happen while you're at home. Right. I have so much stimuli in this room that I'm not going to pay attention yeah. <laughs> to it 100%. Exactly. Like, I love Loki, for example. Yeah. Uh, the uh, I still the haven't show. watched the second episode. I'm going to watch the second episode tomorrow. Oh, man. When Captain America shows up at the end. Shut up. I, um, <laughs> 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 no. Uh, I but, agree with Rampage, too. He said he's been putting off uh, watching the last season of Kim, Kim's Convenience because he doesn't want it to be over. I'm very much taking my time with that last season. I'm watching, like, one episode every three to four days just because I don't want it to be over. I, you know, I started watching it, and then I stopped because, like, there there will be, like, the cast kind of don't like the show. So it's like, I don't know if I want to support it, but at the same time, it, it's a weird feeling. At yeah, this point. I didn't know they hated the show until recently. And right. I don't think they hated the show. I think that it just, there were a lot of things going on behind the scenes that, could have been better <laughs> right you know yeah. and, and i understand that but at the same time i think they did enjoy their time on the show because you can tell they have a good time like you can tell when you're watching something people that are actually having a good time because they like each other right you know that that type of thing but i don't know i just i really like that show and um i don't want it to be over but i don't know i really like that show a lot right um, I mean, I, I, I totally get it. I still haven't watched the ending of How I Met Your Mother because <laughs> I hear I'm going to hate it. Yep, so. you're not going to like it. <laughs> so I've watched half of the last season, and I'm done. <laughs> I got to say, though, uh, Superstore had one a really good uh, final episode, um, hmm. a really good end to a, to a, a series. It, it wasn't oh. disappointing. It was very hopeful. <laughs> like It, it kind of made Speaking you feel good. Speaking of Superstore... You need to watch. You need to watch this Loki episode. Just okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but as far as gaming goes, I played a lot of stuff this week. I, I got back into Civ Se uh, Civ Seven. Is that seven? Yeah, six or seven. The newest, mm -hmm. the one that's out. The the latest version of Civilization. I've been playing it on the Switch. Um, I played a little bit of uh, Little Nightmares. I downloaded that on PS Now, and that game nice. is creepy. Um, been playing that a little bit, and last night I bought um, uh, Phoenix Rising. Um, what's it called? Uh, what is the name of that stupid game? Uh, that's, that's the name of it, Phoenix Rising. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, something Phoenix Rising. Yeah. Why is my is my brain not thinking of it? It's uh, uh you know what you know, you know what a game I'm talking about though, right? I know what <laughs> yeah. you're talking about. Everybody yeah. knows what I'm talking about. I got it on sale last night for thirty bucks on uh, on the Switch, uh, right. and I went. I couldn't pass that up because I, I had it in my wish list. I've, I've been wanting it for a while, um, but yeah, it's. I, I got through the first act, I think, and uh, kind of the first section, and, and I'm I'm loving it because it's like kind of like Breath of the Wild, but better because the uh, better. Yeah, because the the weapons don't break. And I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm enjoying it so far. Well, I, that's fantastic to hear. Yeah, um, but that's that's really what I've done this week. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to add before we go into the news for this week? No, that, that's basically it. All right. Well, let's move into the news. A lot of E3 news this week. <laughs> This was an email from I Am The Rampage, but of course you could pretty much get this anywhere on the internet because it, uh, it was the first thing uh, Derek sent me yesterday morning was like, new Metroid! I'm like, yep, yep, new Metroid coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Polygon.com, Nintendo announces new 2D Metroid for Switch called Metroid Dread. Um, it was dropped on Tuesday, and fans won't have to wait long to play the new game, which will be released for the Nintendo Switch on October 8th. Uh, 2D Metroid fans have already waited a long time for something like this. Uh, it'll be the first new 2D Metroid game in roughly 19 years. Uh, the rec most recent past one was uh, Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS in 2017, the remake. Um, there, it was a remake by Mercury. 
Mercury Steam. I don't I don't know who they are. I guess they're the ones who were working on Metroid Prime 4 and it got yanked from them. I'm not sure. Maybe I got that backwards. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, the, oh, remake by Mac, Mer, Mercury Steam of the 1991 Game Boy game Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. Um, Nintendo is collaborating with Mercury Steam on Metroid Dread as well. Um, let's see. Samus' story continues after the events of the Metroid Fusion game when she descends upon planet ZDR to investigate a mysterious transmission sent to the Galactic Federation. The remote planet has become overrun by vicious alien life forms and chilling mechanical menaces. Samus is more agile and capable than ever, but she can over but can she overcome the inhuman threat stalking the depths of ZDR? I am absolutely giddy about this because I am getting this is one of those games I am getting day one. Yeah, I I saw it and whenever they announced it, I'm like, well. I mean, it's not what he thought it was going to be, but here's a Metroid. <laughs> hey, I will, it, I will take anything Metroid at this point. And you know my love for the side-scrolling 2D adventures. Like, that's my Metroid. So as much as right. I was looking forward to Prime 4, this is just as good, if not better. Like, I, yeah. I'm over the moon about this. And looking at the some of the, the video and the screenshots and... Oh, it just looks so the whole good. thing yeah, yeah the the suit oh my god i cannot wait to play this like magnificent I, yeah. i'm counting the hours to october right now <laughs> <laughs> well so am i but it's because it's spooky season so you know what i'm going to be playing on on uh on twitch in october yep and you know what i'm going to be playing on twitch <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about well, it later <laughs> but there's a uh, from Armes Jackson on NintendoLife.com. There's a Zelda Game and Watch coming this Christmas. So the not I'm not going to go into a whole lot here, but it says the Zelda Game and Watch features The Legend of Zelda, Zelda Two, The Adventures of Link, and The Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, and a special version of the Game and Watch title Vermin, which hmm. features Link as a playable character. I've never heard of that. Never, me neither. There's also a special clock mode. <laughs> well, that's, that's the watch part of it, sir. <laughs> if you set it ahead, th does it mean you overclocked it? Okay. The Zelda Game points. and Watch <laughs> launches on November 12th, just in time for Christmas. It doesn't say how much it's going to be. Uh, it'll probably be about 50 bucks because I, uh, yeah. I got tempted the other day with the Super Mario Brothers Game and Watch that I saw. Um, in walmart the other day and i really wanted it but i was like man i can't really justify the purchase because it's not something i'm really gonna play or touch yeah. it's just kind of one of those things i'm just gonna have like this is a cool thing yeah it's a cool thing but i already have all these games on multiple devices well i do too <laughs> and i'm probably going to end up rampage said here is your weekly reminder to get to playing fortnite <laughs> this whole episode I know, is that I know, I know, I know. It's it's on my switch. I just need to do it. But uh, yeah, next. Oh uh, yeah, well we're done with that one. Uh, <laughs> this came from oh this is this is one of mine uh, from NintendoLife.com. Uh, New Zelda Breath of the Wild two footage shown aiming for a 2022 Switch release. Nintendo has shared fresh footage uh, of the as-yet-untitled uh, Breath of the Wild 2. Um, Zelda series boss Aiji Aonuma, Aonuma sh I, however you say that, uh, showed various Zelda games at the end of the company's E3 2020, 2021 Direct Stream, the last of which was the sequel to Breath of the Wild. The video showed Link falling through the air, taking to the skies in the much-anticipated sequel. Um, he stated that the development team were aiming for a 2022 launch date, so there's still some time to wait before we let loose on this gorgeous-looking game. Um, I pretty much figured that it was not going to come out. I figured they would show footage around this time for E3, <clears throat> but um, I figured since they're already doing Skyward Sword for this year, um, and it's also the 35th anniversary, I, I, I they would kind of be taking money away from themselves if they put those two games out too close to one another. Which and, they are known to do. Yeah. 
But Breath <laughs> of the Wild 2 is the one that everybody's waiting for. So I think yeah. that's going to be I, – I, I think it's going to be an early 2022 release, like a spring release. Because uh-huh. that's going to be a huge seller for Nintendo, especially with the new console coming out, the uh, the Super Switch or whatever they're going to call it. That's going to be like you know an early game for that for that system. Well, I think that's going to end up being holiday of next year. To be honest, um, I, I don't think it's going to be early at all. But maybe you're right. Maybe this is the launch title for that. Maybe it will that's, be. That's that's what I'm thinking because it it, it doesn't. See, and here's the thing that I think a lot of people are uh, surprised about. So many people are surprised that they didn't announce the Nintendo Switch Pro or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not because they've been, like, saying they're going to announce it for over a year now. Yeah. And I just think everyone's stupid. That, me <laughs> too, know. because, I Stop mean, the Switch is play. not waning at all i mean it's no. it's still one of the it's the most popular console right they're now. gonna let a christmas go by before yeah. they announce it. and then they'll announce it yeah. in maybe february probably <laughs> you know i'll agree and, with that you know it just doesn't make any sense to tell everybody hey we have a new switch coming out when you have the fourth quarter coming up and the thing uh, we know we do know that you know nintendo is notorious for and uh, notorious isn't the right word but they don't release anything until it's finished like they don't they don't really care about crunch or getting things out as fast as possible like if it takes five six years to put out a sequel to breath of the wild they'll do that like they're not in any hurry not anything like other companies that will announce something they feel like they don't have to yeah, because we're gonna buy they, it anyway. Exactly, they're <laughs> they're a lot like they're a lot like Universal Studios in a way, where you know they don't announce something until just before it's yeah. about to happen. Well, I think they <laughs> learned their lesson uh, a couple of years ago when they announced Metroid Prime Four, and mm-hmm. then like two months later they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna can that one because it sucks. We're gonna restart it," and it was kind yeah. of an embarrassment for them. So. Which and is interesting for because that's normal in video games. Yeah. But it's not normal for Nintendo. Exactly, yes. <laughs> you know. Like uh, E3, uh, EA, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's par for the course. Um, but when it comes to something like Nintendo, like, that's, they're very traditional Japanese in that way. Like, that's considered, right. like, an embarrassment. And people, you know, lose their jobs over that sort of thing. Like, right. they do not do that. And that's why you see, like, Nintendo loves to hold things back, and then they present something, like, at E3, and then they're like, like and you can get it today, you know, and it's available, right. like, right then. They love doing that. Digitally, yeah. yeah. They're, they're not going to do that with the console or anything like that. They're oh, going to no. build up. But, because uh, Sega did that once, and it backfired yeah. spectacularly. <laughs> but, uh, we um, have a new uh, article here from Armas Jackson. Uh, River City Girls 2 confirmed for Switch, along with River City Girls 0. This sounds salacious, yeah. but <laughs> the limited run game's E3 presentation has finished, and predictably... It was both crazy and genuinely funny. Amazingly, it announced two new titles in such an offhand way that many of us were trying to figure out whether it had been revealed. Thankfully, WayForward had sent out a press release to confirm we weren't imagining things, and I forgot to say that this was Nintendo Life. Thomas yeah. Whitehead wrote all this. Uh, River City Girls 2 is on the way, a follow-up to the popular beat-em-up of 2019. Picking up after the first game, you can again take control of Masako and Kyoko, and in a neat touch, also Kunio, Ricky, and other characters, in parenthesis. Mm -hmm. It will offer new moves, new enemies, new recruits, new environments, and will support both local and online two-player co-op. It'll arrive in 2022. Also confirmed was River City Girl Zero, which is coming to the Switch later this year. This is actually a localization of the 94 Super Famicom title Shin Neketsu 
Koha Kunio Taki no Banka. Okay. <laughs> Albeit with some excellent additions and adjustments. Details are Java below. no Bada. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm sure that's very offensive. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, uh, and this is limited run games, which means they'll be getting physical editions down the line as yeah. well. Yeah. I never got River City Girls. I, of course, remember the River City Ransom for the yeah. NES. Of course, that's, you know, the kind of the prototype for, you know, action RPG ish, you know, kind of uh, develop your character type of thing. Like, that's a very early proto version of those type of games. Um, and I liked right. it. I mean, I play. I still, I fired it up on the Switch last week just to play it for a little while. Um, but yeah, th it was never really my thing. So I probably, probably this is probably another thing that'll just kind of pass me by. I won't really bother with. And you know me, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. You're not a it. Switch <laughs> person. We know. We know. Yeah, I mean, I only picked up the Switch to play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> which is what we're going to be discussing later. Uh, and for our last story, this is from therap.com, and I think uh, I Am The Rampage sent us an uh, email, too, about this. I think he sent this to us. Um, the Castlevania spinoff about Richter Belmont um, Mario and Maria Renard ordered at Netflix. The series is set in 1792 France during the French Revolution. Uh, Netflix has ordered a Castlevania spinoff series from the original show's producers, uh, the streaming service revealed Friday. The spinoff is uh, focused on Maria Renard and Richter Belmont, the son of Saifa and Trevor, and set in 1792 France. Uh, it launched in the late 80s as an action-adventure gothic horror video game series. We know that. Um, after many installments, Netflix turned Castlevania into an anime series, which we all love. I loved uh, the Castlevania series, and a lot of people complained about the last couple of seasons. Yeah, they weren't quite as strong as the first two seasons. Uh, especially once they finally killed Dracula, it kind of felt like, well, where's the big bad now? Like, who's our, who's our enemy? Like, and, where are we going yeah. with this? And then I like the way it turned out where it sort of felt like Castlevania 2, where they were trying to get all the pieces of Dracula back together to bring him right. back to life. I liked the way it ended, and I was hoping that they were going to do uh, another... <clears throat> series of it like it makes sense for them to jump through the the years i mean there's so many years of the castlevania timeline that they can tell stories in and right. i'm all for it keep giving them to me people are a lot of, i saw a lot of people poo-pooing it online i'm like why even if it sucks like at least at least it's something i'd rather that than try like doing your... it that's your motto. Well, at least they tried. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Would you rather have people trying to do something cool or not have anything? It really depends on what it is. Yeah, well, true, but still. I'd rather have something than nothing. And that's my that's my and i'm sitting cents. here thinking i don't know i think the world would be better without batman and robin and you shut your face <laughs> uh I, oh yeah i saw you went viral with your uh batman post the other day that was pretty <laughs> yes, nice <laughs> i did that was that's the dumbest thing i'm like oh i remember this picture from years ago i googled it found it slapped it on a joke and i and i went to bed the next morning I had 25 notifications and I'm like, what did I post? <laughs> That's crazy. And you ended and up in a, a den of geek. Uh, yeah. Chronicle too. That was awesome. Crazy. I know. <laughs> Good week for you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, now we're going to go into this month in video game history. <laughs> On June 3rd of 1986, Nintendo releases Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels as the sequel to the Super Mario Bros. Uh, original uh, Nintendo game. The game was not released in North America, partially because it was deemed too difficult, which, uh, thanks to ha Mr. Howard Phillips himself, uh, he's the reason we got Doki Doki Panic as yep. Super Mario Bros. 2 instead of The Lost Levels. 
He's like, this is not fun. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, this sucks. Uh, and I hate it. Uh, in 1989, uh, Lucasfilm Games releases puzzle game Pipe Mania, which lives on in other titles as a visual representation of computer or security system hacking, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. That was probably like, it, the one thing I hated about uh, Bioshock. It's what I hate about Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I hate like, those puzzle games like that. The good news is in Spider-Man, you can skip them. Oh, really? I didn't know you could skip them. Yeah, they're, they're, I didn't notice until like two-thirds through the game, there's a little little prompt on the bottom, press this button to skip, and I, or hold really? this button to skip. Yes. That would have made that game so much... I mean, I love that game, but right. I hated doing those puzzles. Well, now I know if I ever go through that game again. <laughs> on uh, June of 1994, the Computer Game Developers Association was formed by Ernest W. Adams. And let's check out who the Computer Game Developers uh, Association is. They were nonprofit, <laughs> uh, whose stated mission is to support and, em and empower game developers around the world in achieving uh, fulfilling and sustainable careers. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I do too. I like that. Uh, June 14th. Nintendo releases Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy. It featured remakes of the first four stages of the original game, plus adding 96 puzzle-based levels. Mario is much more versatile in this version as he can backflip, handstand, and spin on wires. It received critical acclaim and became a Game Boy fan favorite and classic. I never played it. Never heard of it until just this moment. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think this one had, I could have, did Derek review <coughs> this or was he going to? I don't remember. It sounds really He familiar. had like a whole month where he did Donkey Kong yeah. games. I don't remember. I have to go back through the archives. I uh, really don't think he did though. I don't think so. Maybe. June 5th of 1995, Street Fighter Alpha is released for the arcades in Japan. It was the first all new Street Fighter game produced by Capcom since the release of Street Fighter 2 in 1991. I mean, I always thought that was another Street Fighter 2. That's what I thought. I thought it was just like a Street Fighter 2 upgrade. Right. So, I don't know. I, I wasn't much of a Street Fighter guy. Because at the time, I think this is like... I think Mortal Co Ultimate Mortal Kombat came out by then. So, I, I don't yeah. know if I was just bewitched by Cause Ultimate there was Mortal what, Kombat like 3. Street Fighter 2... Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Alpha. It was like Street Fighter these... 2 Championship Edition. Yeah. <laughs> like 30 different versions of Street, Street Fighter Street Fighter <laughs> 7 Final Fantasy 8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Alpha took place before 2. Oh, we're getting into Final Fantasy territory here now, so don't Wait, Alpha takes place before, before two. two, that would have been part one. <laughs> well, I mean, Street Fighter Alpha, that makes sense. I, yeah, but there was a Street Fighter one. There was, and that was just Street Fighter. Yeah. So Street Fighter Alpha is 1.5. Where does Street Fighter, the movie, the game, <laughs> all <of> this? <laughs> now what we need is Super, uh, super Street Fighter... The movie, the game, Turbo Alpha. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. Uh, I love it. Uh, I Last think one's yours. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, June 29th, Rare releases Banjo-Kazooie. I'm so... I hate that Derek's not here for this. I know. Uh, N64 in North America. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie is an iconic... Uh, game and character Banjo and Kazooie, and uh, the uh, my little girl is one of the. What happened? Uh, it came out this month, uh, in 1998. And she wasn't even thought of yet. <laughs> no, I was 17. 
June 29th, 1998. I'm just surprised that, you know, with all the talk that's been going on between Nintendo and, uh, and um, Microsoft, they couldn't, like, make nice with Rare and actually have Rare make a new Banjo-Kazooie game for the Switch. No, that would, that would, re- okay, no, that would require Microsoft to develop a game for Nintendo. Why not? But I don't think, especially, I mean, it's a possibility if they wanted to put, you know why not? Because Microsoft will want the the whole thing to be, you will be able to play Nintendo games on Game Pass. Oh, yeah. That's They're not never gonna going that. to happen. No. So, Which actually, yeah. I think that would be a good idea if Nintendo worked with Microsoft on getting mm-hmm. a better online infrastructure. Oh, you know that's not happening. Because Nintendo doesn't give a shit about online. I know, and that's the sad fact, is they could do... They actually had good infrastructure on the Wii. Right. I mean, it was okay. It was, uh, okay, it But was... it's better than what they have now. That store right. and their online... The whole online... Nintendo online is... The user interface is bad. It's the, awful. Right. It's it's not user-friendly at all. And yeah. it's not so much as not having the know-how and ability to do it. They just, it's that they don't want to. They don't think yeah. it's necessary. And honestly, it's not. I mean, they're selling these games and consoles yeah. to you people because you're not demanding more. <laughs> We do on this show every single you, week. But then you turn around and pay $60 <laughs> for the newest game regardless. I, what do you want me to do here? <laughs> you got me. This is how capitalism works. <laughs> uh, before we go into the review tonight, uh, we'd like to shout out some of our patrons. We love you guys. And we're going to start off with Armez Jackson. Axeblade 07, Daniel Salmon, John Jekyll, a.k.a. Mixmaster, Carlos Longoria, Staff Sergeant Sketch, Randy Bailey, Tyler Watson, Brandon Rutledge, Donner Party of Five, Gus and Penny, Jason May, Matthew Salmon, and, of course, Justin Olson. The list keeps getting bigger and bigger every Love every it. month. So, you guys, if you haven't done it yet and you want to support the show, head over to Patreon.com slash Nerdcave Retro, and just throw us a buck or two a month, and that pays our server fees, keeps the lights on, and as long as we stay above that $50 level, we'll keep doing the commentary tracks for you guys, which, uh, as a matter of fact, we need to come up with what movies we're going to do this month and put up a Patreon poll. I, I couldn't think of anything. Honestly, the because um, I, mean, I was thinking of something that I was thinking, related or I was thinking maybe since it's Ghostbusters month, let's just do Ghostbusters. Like the original 1984 yeah. Ghostbusters? Yeah, why not? I thought of that, <laughs> but you know, I'm it's... okay with that if everybody else is okay with that. Hell, do you realize how much trivia you're gonna get out of that? I know movie we wouldn't shut up from the whole time me <laughs> alone. <laughs> uh, and of course, all you new patrons, um, if you haven't done it yet, send us your social media info either on Twitter, Facebook, email, or on Patreon itself. So we can give you the proper social media shout outs that you deserve. And of course, like we said before, if you get us above $100 a month, we'll do the commentary tracks that we do every month on Discord in our Discord community. We'll set up a separate channel, a separate uh, channel in our server, which you'll be able to listen to us do the commentary live when we record it. So if you want that to happen, spread the word and get us above that $100 threshold. And I think yep. that would be awesome to do for you guys. That would be nice. But uh, but now we're going to go talk about a video game that Wally is uh, apparently in love with. it was trying to find theme music for this game <laughs> well, you should you should have asked i would have told i don't know what you played 
But if you play, I, I would have played the Butterbarn Hoedown. <laughs> okay. I swear to Here's God. The thing. I found these. Uh, I went to YouTube and I typed in Fortnite uh, theme music and whatever, and they have these like ten hour long, uh, you know, files of like hundreds of different songs apparently that they play in Fortnite. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. No, no, no. Well, yeah, there's a lot of songs that they play in Fortnite, and there's some that they have actually um, made, like, full-length songs about. One of them is the Butterbarn Hoedown. Uh, the other one is uh, Skos Terrestrial, uh, which I is remember the new that one for one. this yeah, one. I remember that one on there. It, it's, it's I, I swear to you, you should... You should play Butter Butterbarn Hoedown at the end of this episode, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's the funniest flipping thing. It's like, come on down to the Butter Barn, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. uh, it's like the theme song to this like IHOP type restaurant where oh, that's run by a man cake, which is a sentient stack of pancakes. That sounds delicious. Uh, in a cowboy hat, <laughs> it, it's literally the funniest flipping thing. And this is what I'm going to say right now. So. Fortnite, uh, you know what? I know you guys normally read the thing from Wikipedia. So it's a lot of a lot of things have changed. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what beginning. I should paste in here because there's like there's so many websites that talk about what you know the Fortnite, but the thing is, like you said, it's changed so much over the last couple of years. Right, because the game began as a uh, basically a, a competitor to Minecraft. But wasn't and, it wasn't Fortnite a uh, an online um, kind of multiplayer for a nut that they were developing for, a, yeah. for something else? And then they adopted well, yeah, exactly. It, it, what it started out as a uh, project to help uh, showcase the Unreal Engine, mm -hmm. and what they were trying to do is show that we have that they have a competitor for for uh, Minecraft, and essentially it was a battle game where you built up a fortress fort, and uh, you uh, defend that fort that you have built in the time that you have. Uh, to build it before the opposing forces come and get you. Uh, then PUBG happened. Yeah. And that became super popular. So they added the Battle Royal uh, element to it. Uh, so Fortnite is an online video game developed by Epic Games and released in 2017. It is available in three distinct go game mode versions that otherwise share the same general gameplay and game engine. Save the World a cooperative hybrid tower defense shooter survival game. That's what I was talking about a second ago. Uh, for up to four players to fight off zombie-like creatures and defend objects with traps and fortifications. Battle Royal, a free-to-play battle royal game in which up to 100 players fight to be the last person standing. And Fortnite Creative, in which players are given complete freedom to create worlds and battle arenas and, and basically anything goes at that point. Um, so... It is available. Uh, it was developed by Epic Games, uh, available for Windows, Mac, Nintendo Switch, much PlayStation everywhere. 4, <laughs> PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, iOS, Android, and your watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the interesting thing about Fortnite is that it, it's basically... Yes, please tell me why you love this game so much. So... <laughs> Remember the days of Halo multiplayer? Yeah. Um, you would basically just goof around with your friends and play this 16-person battle royal. Right? Well, not really a battle royal, but like a mm -hmm. um, shooting game kind of thing. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because it has the same feeling, but it's not super serious. You know, there's other games like this, like PUBG and Call of Duty, where it's like the typical brown-tinted shooting game, and it's super serious. Everybody's like, you know, super into it, and you have to have the strategies, and 
you have to know what gun does this and that and the other thing. Well, there's a lot of that in Fortnite, but it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, the whole thing's stupid. It's it's just got this feeling of fun that you don't get with any other game like that. So whenever you play with friends, like, I, I play with uh, Rampage constantly. And we are basically a unit. <laughs> we, yeah. have, we have gotten so good at reading each other's minds near about that <laughs> we will... There, there's a wonderful um, video that you can see on YouTube right now of us winning a game by sneaking up on the last two guys and saying, oh, uh, okay, and now, and we hit them both in the head <laughs> and we won. <laughs> and <clears throat> little moments like that, all that scatter throughout, make this game worth playing because you'll get in situations that you don't know how you're going to get in, out of. You'll end up outplaying somebody who looks who, who you shouldn't have. Um, you know, like, th there is a, in most of the games, the, the Battle Royale games, they don't have the building aspect. That's the thing that didn't, that kind of made me not like the game. I don't like the building aspect of it. And that's, that's where I came in. I came in, and I said literally, I'm never going to learn how to build. <laughs> It's just not going to happen. Because I, I couldn't but, even figure it out. Like, I, I, I played it right. for a while. I'm like, what is happening here? And that's the thing. Over time, I learned little things. You know, I, I built a foundation. So in order to build, you press a certain button, and then every button builds a different thing. So I would learn, okay, this button is what I need to press if I need to go up here. So it's like learning combos. So, in order to build a um, like a way for people to not hit me if they're shooting at me, or if I need to to uh, build a box around me so I can heal up, all I have to do is hit the button and then just turn around in place while holding the the R two R one button, and you know, and then I have to get a roof, so you hit R uh, L one, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it becomes second nature after you start doing it a long. So at that point, it's like, okay, all right, I'm going to start building, but not be stupid. Like, there are guys in this game that could build a, a, an apartment complex <laughs> with, with a swimming pool and a laundry <laughs> facility all before you even realize that they were in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> and those guys, there's two ways that I like to handle them. Run <laughs> is one of them. And the other one, and that's the thing, you have to, the thing I like about it is that I have to outsmart people. So I'll see something like that, and it's two people fighting each other like that. I'll just wait to see who wins. <laughs> and then once whoever has won, has won, get close enough while they're fighting to take them out when they're, when they're hurt. <laughs> you All know? right. And just, you know, it's those things where it's like, we got to figure out the smart tool here. It doesn't yeah. have to be, you know, about the, what, what we call being sweaty, which is, you know, just throwing up all of these builds all over the place <laughs> and editing them so there's a hole here so I can shoot out and then cover the hole back up and then climb a little higher and open. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to shoot you with a rocket launcher. <laughs> I'm going to set fire to your building so you will die of fire, of fire before you can get out of there. See, the, the, uh, the few times that I've actually played Fortnite, I actually have won a match before pretty much by accident like with my team that I right. was with or whatever. I just followed them around, and we won. I was like, okay, that's cool. Cool, yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, I you know, I, I land, I'm, I'm going around trying to find guns and ammo and get immediately killed. Like, right. a minute into the match. Sometimes less. And I'm like, this is not fun. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. You have to... You have to, you have to play more. I mean, you can't 
ju- like a couple of times. The last is... time I played, I actually found a car, and I just rode rode around running people over, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that okay, so and here's another thing. So there's a lot of crossovers. So I, right now you can play as like Batman, Harlequin. Uh, you can play as the alien. You can play as the Mandalorian with Baby Yoda on your back. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, th- there's all kinds of wonderful characters out there, but they also have original characters. And the storyline is evolving also. So every about three months, the game changes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just two weeks ago, we were in Primal, which means that there were velociraptors running around <laughs> trying to kill us, wolves, boars, you had to craft makeshift weapons and bows and, you know, stuff like that. And now the island's being invaded by aliens. Sweet. <laughs> so now there's there's all these UFOs all over the place that you can actually get in and fly around. And they are, they are overpowered as hell. But it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's still a lot of fun whenever I get to shoot down one of them. I see that I eliminated the guy in it. And there, and then you go talk to to Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty, try to 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 get something, and then you go. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's fun, and I, I it reminds me of Halo, uh, of when Halo was, a, especially when you're with friends and you're t- talking smack over the headset, um, and you know there's. <laughs> There, it does get a little frustrating when you're with people of lower skill, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm talking like much lower. Yeah. But, but it, it's still a lot of fun, you know, to, to run around and, and teach people how to play and, you know, carry them to victory and teach them <laughs> how to fish. Which is what that team did to me uh, when I actually won <laughs> that that match because all i did was just follow the, i found them and then i just followed them around right and the thing is with with uh, there's also fishing mechanics so you can go fishing um and you can catch weapons or fish uh <laughs> some fish will every fish has a different capability. what are you gonna do hit me with that fish fish <laughs> yes and the answer is yes <laughs> That, and the thing is, is that there's like stink fish that, like, if you throw them inside of pe- inside of the boxes that people awesome. are making, they'll explode and they'll start taking damage <laughs> from from the stench. Uh, and there's um, some of them that you can eat and you can see the closest person to you. Uh, you can also do um, bounties, so you'll get to go to a bounty board or talk to like a John Wick character that they have or something, and you would. Uh, basically say, yes, I will accept a bounty, and it will show you about where somebody is and task you to go get them. And they'll know when you're getting closer to them because there's a little bar on the top that goes, you're in danger type situation. So that's how and, you know you have a bounty on your head or something like that? Right. Well, it'll tell you, hey, uh, protect I am the rampage. He has a bounty on him. <laughs> and and, and uh, you know, whenever the person's closer, we'll hear the beep, 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 you know, in, in our ears, and we'll see the little red mark, and sure enough, here comes somebody shooting at us, like, there they are, get them, you know, that kind of thing. It's it's great in ways that are hard to explain, but at the same time, uh, it's a free-to-play game. The skins are not free. You have to buy them. Uh, all of the in-game stuff, none of it is free is uh pay to win which is good yeah so it, it's uh, there are skins that do give you an advantage for example anything that's black like batman if you're if it's dark out you can't see batman yeah which is perfect <laughs> and uh but at the same time um there's a battle pass system also so every season um you level up with a, you know doing different quests for example i so just did one where i had to land under, a specific like, what quest. are the bat- what is the battle pass like what is so a that? battle pass gives you uh cosmetics and new skins so it's something and, you pay for every month yeah you pay for it and as you level up 
you get different stuff out of it. And how so, much is a battle pass? Uh, it depends on the season. I think I think it's like eight bucks. It's so it's good. not a whole, and that's for three months of of stuff. That's not bad. And and the thing is, is that the whole goal is to get you up level one hundred uh, in your skill. And then, and and you do that by doing the different tasks and quests and stuff like that. Like you know, land at this particular place, Let, go here and talk to this person, and they'll give you a quest and all this type of stuff. Uh, there's also little quests where uh, you can now there's like phones that you can answer, like in GTA, <laughs> and you know it'll give you a certain amount of gold for performing the task for them. Um, and gold can be used at vending machines or uh, different people sell different loot. So, for example, there's one person that sells like a golden sniper rifle, and you know the different the different weapons have different capabilities. That it starts at white and ends at gold. So it's um, and whatever color in between will determine how powerful your gun is, basically. Yeah. Um, and different guns are good for different people. Like there are people who love the snipers, and there are people who hate them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like here you can have the sniper. You know that kind of thing. I never was good at, at sniping on any of like the when we used to play Call of Duty or you know Halo. I was never right. a good sniper ever. Well, um, I'm I've gotten okay at it as long as they stand still yeah. long <laughs> enough for me to shoot. You know, and and that's really the thing. It, it's uh, I think the matchmaking is really good too because you do get matched with people of similar skill. I'm more um, of a run in like a maniac with a shotgun trying to kill as many people as I can before I get killed. So, because yeah. I know I'm going to get killed anyway, I might as well take it, as many people as I can with me. Now, here's the thing here's the thing that's permadeath in these yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. There's no that's the thing that got me about this game. There's no respawn. So, if you're dead, no. it's like, all right, well, I got to go wait in the <laughs> lobby for another five ten minutes for another match to start oh no they normally don't don't take that long because fortnite's one of the more popular games so you yeah know, you're only going to get a couple only have to wait a couple minutes um but and it's not like call of duty where it knocks you all the way to the main menu yeah uh it, you actually get to just sit there and watch the other person until it puts you into a new lobby yeah. but with uh if you're playing in a squad or more than one person um you know, you have the capability of being revived. So if somebody knocks you down, uh, your other person could destroy the other two people that, that are there and then revive you. Or if you do die, he you can get a reboot card. Yeah. That reboot card can be used at any of the reboot vans to get you to come back. But you come back with just a really shitty gun. <laughs> and the uh, reboot van... Makes a whole hell of a lot of noise. So if there's anybody in the in the area, they'll know that you were there. Huh. Uh, so so there's a lot of risk reward with this too. So you, you know, like I was talking about the uh, UFOs, the new mechanic. Um, it, it, thing is, is that if you it has a tractor beam, you can pick up stuff and just kind of drag it around and <laughs> kill people just by dragging it on top. Like if you can pick up a tractor trailer and just Boom, 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 hitting everybody on the ground, <laughs> and they all instantly die. That's and, awesome. But the thing is, it also, it, you can't, it's very hard to really master the controls yeah. of the UFO. Um, but, it, yeah, I mean, it's, um, and the way that it makes sure that everybody's around you is that there is a, a storm that chases you down. Yeah. And it will guide you to a, a circle where everybody can go and fight. So you can't just hang out in the back of the map. You have to go there or you will die in the storm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, it, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games where it's easy to pick up, but it's difficult to master. And it's a lot of fun just to, to banter back and forth. Me and, me and Rampage have formed a real friendship over Fortnite. And it's one of the things that I highly recommend. Now, very specifically to the Switch, the graphics aren't great. Uh, the draw distance is really far, uh, really close. So, like, 
it doesn't load things as quickly as other consoles or or the PC, but which puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I just don't like the controller. But at the same time, it is nearly identical. So if you're playing on the Switch, if you start playing on the Switch and you decide, hey, I want to go on the PlayStation, all you got to do is log into your Epic account, and it will bring all of your stuff over. I was just about to ask if I if I could do that. <clears throat> because for some reason I was thinking at, at when I first got on the Fortnite, I didn't think there was I think there was a big thing about how you couldn't go from like if you got it on the Switch then you wouldn't be able to get it anywhere else. Like you wouldn't right. Well now if you set up an Epic account you can take it anywhere you want. Okay, good. So you, you're not going to have a big deal. Um, okay. It's, in fact I've played on the Switch before while people are doing something else. I've played on the PC before on this one, and it was like playing on a refrigerator, on a smart refrigerator. It was bad. It was, uh, but it's different people have different uh, skill levels as far as building is concerned as well uh, because the people who use a mouse and keyboard are at a little bit of an advantage. But, uh, and the PlayStation 5 actually has um, pressure sensitive buttons. So if you're pulling the trigger on a gun, it feels like pulling the trigger on a gun. Hmm. Uh, but if you're just like picking something up, you know, it'll, it'll just, you know, it's a button press. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, and that has saved me sometimes because I'm going to try to hit something with my, with my pickaxe. <laughs> and then I realize, oh shit, I have my gun out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, because you know, I, so I don't squeeze all the way. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, and you don't want people to know where you are before yeah. you want them to know where you are. <laughs> but well, it uh, sounds yeah. fun. I really wish I could find some time to play with you guys. So maybe in July, maybe July will <laughs> calm down enough for me to be able to play play some Fortnite and stream it as well. Well, we're gonna be. Uh, I'll probably be streaming some Fortnite in about. I don't know, 30 minutes or an hour from now. <laughs> but me and Rampage are always on. It's it's a, it's just it's a lot of fun, especially when you have other people. Well, tell everybody your Twitch account that they can go follow it, you. Uh, Twitch.tv slash The Real Big Wall. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, where you can see it. Uh, we're not professionals. We just do this for fun. We're yeah. hanging out with friends, basically. So on a scale so, of 1 to 10, what do you give it? <clears throat> I give it an 8. Mm, good. And the reason why I don't give it the full 10 is because the quality of the seasons will fluctuate. So yeah. it, like, the last season wasn't as good as the season before. And this season's probably better than the previous. Uh, I mean, the yeah, the previous. Jury's still out on if it's better than the one I, I actually came in on uh, because of the fact that these UFOs are so overpowered. So if you are in the final circle and some some bitch has a UFO <laughs> and you do not, you are at a huge disadvantage because you have to shoot them out of the sky first. And it, those UFOs have a lot of armor. So is it sort of like playing uh, Destroy All Humans? You remember that game? I remember that game. I don't know. Um, that game was fun because you could like like pick up cows and stuff while you're in the yeah. ship. <laughs> it was awesome. And you can do all that. I mean, as a matter and, of fact, I'm, even... I might actually review that because it's on PS now. Ooh. So, I'm, and that's a well, PS2 game. Here, here's something really funny: is that you can actually pick up people and throw them into the storm. Uh, with the, with the UFO. <laughs> so I've awesome. seen people like pick up people, fly out into the storm, drop them, and then fly back out. That's fantastic. <laughs> and, and it's like, well, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had it where, oh my god, uh, we dropped in this one. Uh, certain areas in this season will sh- have like a purple uh, tinge to their name, and that means they're being invaded by aliens. And so if you go over there, there's a whole bunch of UFOs. So we're we're looting, trying to get our guns and everything like that, uh, in a duos match, and one of them picked me up and take me all the way to another area of the map, while my partner is like, "What am I? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm by myself." It, it was it was it, it's, it's pretty funny. I like. I mean, I'll start playing. I'll be in there. I promise. Eventually. 
eventually one day. Yes. <laughs> You'll be playing uh, this modern game. <laughs> but uh, we're coming up on the end of the episode. It was nice having you here this week. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so anything you want to throw out there before uh, we leave this evening? Uh, just at the real big wall. My pin tweet is the viral tweet that I had. <laughs> it is not for young eyes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the it's about the Batman discourse. If you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes. And we are. Uh, oh, I didn't even say this. The uh, Fortnite Batman crossover comic book series is really good too. Um, so I do recommend that. You can actually catch that on the. Uh, this isn't a sponsor or anything, but the DC uh, Infinite app, uh, <laughs> where you can read all those comic books. Yeah. And they and Batman doesn't eat the Catwoman. <laughs> <sighs> no. Not heroes <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Edric Bader says they do. Yeah, uh, and he's Batman. So yes, you know. in that show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that's going to do it for this week. Um, I think uh, I'm not going to be able to, to stream anything this weekend. I wanted to stream last weekend. But like I said, life's been really busy lately, and um, I really would like to get back to streaming more on the weekends. I did uh, uh, NES Saturday uh, the weekend before, and I played some, uh, some um, Mike Tyson's punch out. I would like to be able to nice. beat that game in one fell swoop. So I might be working on that over the next month or two. So uh, go, if go follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jfunktastic, and just follow me over there and uh, join me when I'm doing some retro game stuff. So I think that's going to do it for tonight. Let me go ahead and play our music here. Uh, if you'd like to email us, you can email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We are at nerdcaveretro.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdcaveretro. Instagram and Twitter at nerdcaveretro, at jfunktastic, at Derek underscore diamond, and of course at the real big wall. Go buy some merch. We've been selling a lot of shirts lately over at ncrmerch.com. Got a lot of cool shirts over there. Uh, not even shirts. You can get coffee mugs, computer bags, all kind of stuff. Pillows. Just go check it out. Yeah, pillows, wall hangings, all kind of stuff. And, and of course, go to patreon.com slash Retro to support us directly on the show. And if you can't do that, can't throw us a couple bucks a month, go leave us a review wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. So please tell them what it's all about, Wally. <coughs> Half of the, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Live long and Good smoke night. meats. <laughs> Live long and smoke meats, everybody. Oh, a fellow chucker, eh? That was a fun episode. That was. Yeah. I'm almost out of my I, my voice is leaving me. But yeah, you know, I so. need to go get something to drink because it is like a thousand degrees up here and turn the, the fan on turn the air down to like 50 <laughs> i cannot believe how hot it's been no it's ridiculous how hot like and it's june <laughs> i know and people talking about there's like a heat wave going on in utah and arizona where it's like 120 degrees i'm like right it's only like not like the other day yesterday it was 95 <laughs> degrees but with the heat index it was like 108 with like seventy well, percent humidity, and I was dying all day. We uh, rampage drove through yesterday. And oh, did he? Yeah. So I, I uh, he was on his way home from vacation. So I went to go meet him, and it only lasted like fifteen minutes before I was like, "Look, I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> I'm falling. And my uh, my head feels like it's boiling. I know. You walk outside. No, it's like you see how glowy I am right now. It's like. Yeah. This whole, like, last two weeks, I've just had, like, a sheen on me. <laughs> like, I can't get rid of it. Like, I take a shower, I dry off, and the sheen comes back. I look like I belong in, like, a, a, set, a spaghetti western. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, any movie set in the South yeah. during any, the summer. Any movie, like, uh, any Clint Eastwood movie in the in the 60s or 70s. Like, <laughs> this is what everybody looked like back then. Correct, uh, yes. But thank you guys for watching on Twitch, and uh, we will be back next week. And you guys have a lovely evening, and we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.